too. Okay, so this game, so two-part series here. This is the first game I played Mr. Spicy Chess himself, okay? We all know him, the monster of a grandmaster he is. Great coach, great teacher, funny, all that other stuff. If you don't know him, then just go Google him right now. Type it in Google. You'll find it easily. Subscribe to the channel. Get all the content because I did. Okay. I'm a big fan of who we talking about today. The Ginger GM, Simon Williams, Grandmaster, Black Lion. That's who I love the Black Lion. I love playing that game. Or uh, Of course, he has a course on it. So that's where it inspired for me, the Black Lion. Um, he also got a London system and some other stuff he plays. Dutch, of course. So shout out to Simon Williams. But we'll play them. Um, twice back-to-back -back games in uh, blitz on chess.com. So I played him here and I was like the first time I played him I was like, oh snap. This is this ginger GM like oh, let me let me let me hey Everybody stop talking for a minute everything turn off the TV turn off everything this is ginger GM hold up You got to play for real like this is oh man You only get it one time really to kind of play him like that. You never just get paired up with the ginger GM Pretty cool, bro. So it's 3-0. It was actually 3 was three minute game two of them back-to-back after the first one, he was like, let's go. I'm like, all right, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Ginger GM, absolutely. Let's play a second one. And we did play. So I'll show you. Simon sees it every game. Why'd you play it? But his rating is insane. No. <laughs> his rating is insane. It gets crazy. It's actually his uh, feed day right now. It takes 24, 92, something like that. He's high 24s. Of course, he was over 25. Fluctuates like all Grandmasters usually fluctuate in rating and stuff and go, and it's fine. But uh, I, watched, I watched once, very entertaining. Yes, he's great. He's great. So... Here we go. Here we go. This is the first game. Okay. He plays like not off the wall stuff, but he plays stuff that's different, which I like too. Spicy chess in a way, pushing Harry the H pawn and all the other brothers on the board too. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of it. So I like playing different kind of chess, meaning like I don't play all the mainline Roy Lopez, uh, Nidorf the Sicilian. And like it's all, I mean, everybody does that, right? You know, which is fine. The stuff's still strong and I have played some of this stuff, but I'm into stuff that I don't have to study you know everybody's playing it right so he's playing white here i'm playing black so here we go i play c5 this is all i play i, I love i mean especially when i'm in a zone if i'm like okay this is i need to play somebody i'm about to play for real i'm playing c5 so c5 here we go he goes a3 out the opening so at first i'm thinking it's like a wing gambit and i'm like a3 bro what is it wing gambit what a wing gambit is is like out the opening you can play b4 you can play b4 out of the opening it's called the wing gambit so it's a pretty spicy way to play chess a3 spicy kind of chess seems like simon williams to be so of course b4 is, could definitely be the next move here and bishop b2 and some wild stuff can happen playing saying against jmg no fear no fear no fear at all no fear so after a3 i go g6 this is my usual stuff i do nothing else nothing else mainstream openings don't right simon and mainstream openings don't mix correct it don't it does not so i did not expect anything else but i always go g6 so you know if he does go for this route i'm already ready so luckily for me i already play this not that i'm playing something different i already played this, so it kind of benefits me because it's kind of annoying to play b4 and be hit with bishop to g7 as soon as you do so i play g6 he goes h4 out the opening i'm like oh okay you know he pushed harry the h pawn that's where harry the h pawn actually came from so it's not right so did you, you you think you're gonna play simon and not see harry it just don't work like that so h4 definitely is here and especially with h5 h6 and he about to come see you that's what he's saying so h4 is on the way i'm like you know what i'm not trying to be like this you know what i got my, my homie henry over here he may not be Harry, but he's Henry. So I push my H5 and he's over here. I'm not playing no games. I'm not allowing him to get in. And because if he if you do, it's over. So I played H5, which is uh, something you can do here. And honestly, the engine was just funny. If you do some lines in the engine, the engine automatically just throws out H4 when he's Bishop G7 lines, which is very important to notice. And it is uh, it's very good too. It's very good. I, even I do it like with the white pieces, probably not so early here, but uh, definitely H4 is a thing I do against Finchetto variations. So um, D4, he goes D4, finally goes D4 here. I'm like, okay, so we having like kind of a delayed Sicilian here. I snap on D4, then he goes C3. I'm like, okay, all right, Ginger GM. Look, I understand, you know what? I'm not gonna take this pawn because I probably shouldn't. Because, and here's the thing, here's the thing, guys. Anybody play the Smith-Moore Gambit, you already know what we're going into. You get in a lot of trouble when you take a second pawn. 
a lot of trouble when you're gonna take a second pawn here because I am down on development and I actually do have some holes around my king here but he has like an open board he has an open board and not to say that this is actually even good for white but you do have to be aware that you are down on development here and stuff's about to get very quick for white as it does a lot of times if you do take the second pawn so it's not advice usually to take the second pawn especially playing Simon Williams I'm, I'm just you know what I'm good I'm not about to take this pawn uh, I'm fine I'm just gonna develop so I got out of the way Bishop g7 AB says Canty versus MGM that's right absolutely what's up AB let me put my ABs in the chat welcome to the stream bro what's going on hi AB says hip side what's up Bishop to g7 and then he just takes it which you should of course I go d5 because I always thrust the center always thrust the center here and then e5 and at this point, it's just time to develop. I got to do some development here. So here we go. Here we go. This is it's not. This is nothing yet compared to what's about to happen. It's about to get crazy. Okay, e5. I go knight to c6, and then he goes knight to c3. And then now here, I had a I had a dilemma here because I'm like, this man's very strong, and I need some things to do. And I I got to keep developing. You know, I got to act like this is still a regular game because h5 is still here. So even if I castle to the king side, I have played h5. And same for him. He has plays h4. Honestly, I have no ambition to castle queen side. I honestly never ever do. So I'm not about to play something I ain't never done before against somebody as strong as him. So I'm not about to do it. So after knight to c3, what would you play as black here? You got some options. But what would actually you do in the chat? Is chess. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. He says e6. Knight h6 from Z Nation. Knight h6 from Nick BC. Bishop g4 from Hand Pants. Bishop f5 from Zomni. Great moves. I think all of these moves are considered. Every single one. F6 from Chess Tricks. A6. Queen b3. F6. E6. Rook h6. Okay, no, no, stop. Don't do that, Irish. Don't even jump on the deep end like that. Rook H6. Rook oh, that's an end. No, it is an end. So he's okay. All right, we'll take that back. He's okay. Knight H6. Knight H6. Bishop F5. Queen B6. Nice. Everybody got moves here, guys. Now, I'm going to let's go through the ones that aren't right. E6 and F6 aren't. E6 is just, this is not good. There's a rule, and it, this is like Jedi Mastery, uh, Jedi no Mind Trick number 9072. It does say here that you cannot, you should not play E6 and G6 at the same time. A lot of times it's because this knight comes in the b5 and he just you in trouble you in a lot of trouble with this so now you have to choose a diagonal if you go e6 and g6 it's usually not good so i have to probably back this up and then it's annoying and stuff so you got to be very very careful of playing e6 i also locked this bishop in and it wants to be outside the pawn chain and not locked inside with e6 so um, f6 i wasn't a fan of it is something but i mean bishop d3 is almost automatic then I have to go f5. That's like ugly. This is very ugly. I mean, I, I I would love to get a knight here, but how? And then this is not the position I hope for at all. I'm not a fan of it. And that's why fine go to say f6, right? It just depends on when. Bishop f5 is what, uh, is what uh, Fresh Lizard says. Bishop f5 is a move, but Bishop f5, uh, it wasn't, I don't need to right now. And actually queen b3 is quite annoying because he's hitting two pawns here. He's hitting two pawns. So it, it, it's also exploiting a weakness of the last move. That is a concept and a principle. Exploiting the weakness of the last move. So my we, my last move, bishop f5, he moved from here. Makes this weak, so we just hit it. Queen b3, hits it, and hitting this one too. So you're in trouble. So I need something else to do. So shout out to the knight h6s in the chat, because that's what I played. I played knight h6 because it's time to castle. I got to do something. And I also have aspirations of swinging in the f5 and putting some pressure here. Play f6 at the right moment and then put some extra pressure on d4, especially maybe after an e6 move. So knight to h6. There it is. There it is. That's why I said 95 for sarcastic, sarcastic guillotine. Yeah, but 95, it, you don't need to go to C4 yet. There is preparation. Everything in chess, especially in great chess, uh, it causes preparation it needs to be number one. So you prep first. Prep first. We in here. 95. Yeah, 95 is uh was no good. No good out the opening. Not out the opening. You don't need to do it right now. And it, it comes later. It comes later when stuff's prepared. Knight h6, knight h6 gang, where you at, says C Nation. Queen b3, knight takes d4, threatens knight c2. You might be right, actually. You might be right, but bishop f5 was just not principally right. And also, I like to say, um, there's an anyway mindset I like to teach my students, too. Like, I have to develop this anyway. 
And instead of like creating weaknesses and problems, right? Bishop f5, I love this bishop too. It's a very good bishop. So not that I want to trade, but bishop d3, I'm kind of like forced to. And I really don't want to trade this yet. Just just yet, because uh, it's, it's not, I don't need to yet. I like to keep my bishops too, but we'll see. But I think that's right though. So let's see what happens. Thanks for the follow. Chaser Jim 88. What's the technical name of Simon's opening? It's just wacky. Um, honestly, you know what's funny? This is called the Min Garini or Mig a Min Min Garini variation. That's exactly what it says. I'm looking at it right now on chess.com. They populate your opening. It's the I've never ever heard of this. And this is one of them Sicilians like, well, which Sicilian should I study? And then you pull out a scroll and it's like a hundred variations. That's this is one of those. Min Min Garini, never ever heard of this in my life. So I don't know what that is. Maybe black did, I don't know if black did this or if white caused this to be a Min Garini. But it doesn't phase me or I don't believe that, you know, I'm pretty sure Simon knows this this one because it's a wacky, weird opening. And he does that. And he got some strong ones, just like the Black Lion, which I definitely play a lot of. Okay, so Obscure Sicilian, correct. Chess, oh, what's up, Chess Tricks? So Knight H6, I go here. He went Bishop to B5, very good. You kind of want to keep this here. Okay, what was the beginning? I'll show you real quick if you're just coming in. E4, C5, A3. I'm like, okay, wing gambit, something like that. Especially if I'm going D6 or Knight C6, B4 is coming ASAP. But I go G6 all the time, so it's beneficial for me because when he goes B4, B4 it's an automatic tempo hitting the rook. It's just uncomfortable. So he went H4, here pushing Harry to H pawn, as you should. And then I pushed my boy Henry over here, H5, right behind him. And then D4, snap, C3, Bishop G7, takes D5, E5, Knight C6. Okay, he goes knight c3, I go knight h6, and then he goes bishop to b5. So this is a nice move to make a lot of times. I always have tricks like bishop d7, queen b6, and knight takes d4 in some lines, but you got to be careful of when, because this pawn could be hanging. So I have tricks like that. I know that was coming, but then I'm like, well, I played knight h6 to do what? what? What am I going to do? To castle, it's very simple. So I'm getting out of the way. Knight h6, castle, don't even think twice about it. Don't even think twice about it. So he goes knight to knight g to e2, and now this got very interesting. Very interesting here. Very interesting. I'm curious, chat. What are you doing here? Black to move. After knight g to e2, there's a lot of things you can do. There's many, many moves here. Knight f5 from scv chess. Knight to f5. A6 from Zomni. Chaser Jim with the Twitch Prime. Let's go. Thanks so much for the Twitch Prime. I'm going to put a lightsaber in the air. A few of them for you. Let's welcome Miss Jedi. Thank you so much, Chaser Jim. Knight F5 from Nick B. H3. That's not a move. Bishop G4. Bishop G5. Thanks for the follow. Sensi 88. Queen A5. Bishop G5. Bishop G4. A6 from Quinn. Bishop g4, but it's a little soon yet from Sarcastic, AB, and Cook to Live. Thanks, guys, for, for the emotes. We have a3. a6, I'm assuming, x Steve, which is right here, a6. So here we go. Shout out to Sarcastic Guillotine. I play Bishop g4, guys. I play Bishop g4. And here, let's look at all the Bishop moves. Honestly, at this point, it's time... Queen to d6, says Drogdon, jumps off the deep end. Queen d6, and then he jumped out the car while it was riding and driving on the freeway. Absolutely. So, uh, a6, a6, zombie says we in here. Yeah, so bishop d7, though. Bishop d7 is just not not a move. It's like you just chilling. Like, what was, what is this for? Which it could be. Knight takes, and then you take here, and you got this kind of thing coming on. You got this. It's pretty cool, but bishop d7 is kind of passive. I don't need to right now. I am not the passive kind of player. I'm going to tell you one of my favorite players all the time. I always say it on the stream is, is Mike Al Tao or Mike Al Tao. I like Tao is like everybody knows Tao. And of course, I try to model games or tactics a lot of times off of his play and what he likes to do and et cetera. And thinking in that mindset that I like to play aggressive chess. Simon does the same. Simon Williams loves attacking chess. So it's like I, I know I'm in for some attacking stuff here. So knight gd2, instead of playing bishop d7, I'm not going there. Bishop e6 is not a move. Like, what is this bishop even doing here? It's just like a pawn. f6 may run into f4. I need to do something now. So I want bishop g4 to provoke kind of like a weakness in a way. So I'll play bishop g4, expecting f3 to happen, expecting him to play f3. And that's what he did. He played f3. And then I got out of the way with bishop d7. 
Magician Arena. That's right. This analysis is amazing. I've been waiting for a great player to break it down for me like this, so I could sub. Appreciate it. From Denver, bro. Denver in the building. Thanks, Chaser Jim. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Fisher, best ever. Tao's my favorite, too. Tao's better than Fisher. Oh, man. They're going crazy in the chat. Lightsabers everywhere. Fighting. Fisher, Tao. Fisher, Tao. My grandfather. Whoever. Whoever's your best player. That's awesome. Tao's mine. Uh, Quinn. Razor Brand with the lightsabers and some fire. So after bishop to d7, bishop e3, this is where he goes. You can go back this way. I think there's a pretty solid move, honestly. Pretty solid move. And for some reason, I actually thought, you know, he was going to castle. But then I was like, well, he's probably not going to castle. But then I was like, maybe he's going this way. Maybe he's going this way. So at this point, I need something legit to do now. Didn't you say bishop e7 is not doing anything here? Correct, Zax. Great, 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 great observation. Check this out. So after bishop g4, f3, I want to at least provoke a weakness in a way and just kind of sit here on d7. So now I kind of know, if you think about this, I kind of know he's probably not going this way. You've made h4, you've played f3, you're probably not going this way anymore. And his bishop sits here. So now I can kind of set up and be ready for the c file when he does, if he does, castle queenside. So let's see what happens. Bishop to d7, he goes bishop e3. What if knight takes d5? Great observation here. I would love for knight takes d5 due to what? What's the move here, guys? you actually seen it already. I already showed you. Let's see who's the first to put it in the chat. After knight takes d5, black to move. Magnus better than Kasparov. I mean, rating-wise. And actually, I guess, you know, I guess you can say it is a different era too. Different time, stuff like that. In a way, kind of different resources and different uh, everything. A lot. Knight takes e5. 95, correct. That's right. Knight takes e5. If, if pawn takes, then bishop takes. Everything's all open. Queen a5 from pepperoni. Unfortunately, I think that still may work. No, it, yeah, I think it still does. Because if they go here, you can still go 95. But I'm more into 95 first because I just don't want any issues. So 95. If bishop takes, you take with the knight. So. It doesn't work. Bishop d7, bishop e3. And then I go where? Where do you go now? Where do you go now? You got a lot of moves here. Rook c8, a6, king h7, knight f5. a6, then b5. Okay, a6, b5 is a thing. Quinn says knight f5. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Rook c8. Rook c8 is nice too. So what I did here, what I did is I was like, I'm not ready to play f6. Knight f5 looks good. Now push the a pawn. I had a lot of ideas here. A lot of ideas. And this is what I did. I was like, you know what? I don't know what's going on right now, but I do know that I probably need to break this up later. And I don't think, let me actually see what the engine does because I want to see what they did. I actually played e6 here. And the best moves are knight f5 and rook c8 or f6. So I played e6, and I think this is kind of off because I looked at it later, and I was like, this just doesn't feel right. But I did go here because later on I'm going to go f6 and maybe like defend this pawn this way. I also can swing this knight around, maybe knight e7 for this. It was kind of like a waiting move, but I had a better waiting move, meaning I probably should have played rook c8. Look, Coming back and looking at this, rook to c8 is absolutely just probably way better because I'm waiting for his king to get over here too. a6, b5 is coming. It's just better, but e6, I chose e6 here. So let's see what happens. After e6, he goes queen to d2. Well, you know where he's about to go with his king. So I'm like, oh, yeah, probably should play rook c8. Queen d2, I go king h7. This is automatic all the time. So I feel the uncomfortable pressure here, but it's still not over. Now after castle queen side, guess what I play? Rook c8. So should have been here. And it, it, the difference is that this pawn would not be here. And even this is still not hanging. So kind of a wasted move instead of a waiting move. Very, very good lesson learned there. Rook c8. He goes king to b1 because after you castle, you're not fully castled a lot of times until you go king to b1. Now, when he goes king b1 here, there's a lot of moves here, guys. And it, to be aggressive here, to do something, you need to you need to do something now or else you go into Bobby Fischer sack sack mate. Because you know what his next moves are. And Bobby Fischer sack sack mate is uh, my uh, chest, you know, Bobby Fischer 
my 60 memorable games where he talks about that sack sack mate stuff is not fun to be on the sack sack mate side or you know on the end of that so ouch so i gotta do something asap or this is gonna be bad i think pushing a pawn force him to take your knight it's just sarcastic knight a5 from z nation anybody else Knight takes e5. Unfortunately, that doesn't work this time, Zomni, because this is defended. So I'm just giving up a piece. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And I know he's about to push these pawns. I know it's coming. Oh, didn't see the knight. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, Zomni. It's all good. Here we go. Here's the move. I play, shout out to you, Z Nation. I played knight a5. I played knight to a5. It's exactly what I played. It's exactly what I played. I played this because I know I need to get rid of this. It says rook g8. Rook g8 is a move. It is, but I, I think it's just too passive. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to defend. Before anything happens, I'm just trying to defend. Instead of like looking for attack of, attacking resources instead of looking for that so it's like the best defense is offense kind of thing so that's what i was facing i was like i need to defend so i need to be i need to attack <laughs> i need to defend so i need to attack that's a great way to look at it can't he wipes out of town my eight-year-old son chase is getting to stay up late or school oh okay to watch this analysis he says hey james what's up what's going on bro what's up chase welcome to the stream hope you learned something today big fella let's go we in here hello chase says the chat absolutely their belly is cow says hi hello so i went knight a5 and I, I thought at bishop d3 i was still gonna go knight c4 and get rid of some stuff but uh he went he went g4 first he's already ready here we go guys talk about crazy this is about to get wild. I hope you did some tactics today. If you didn't, you probably want to watch this again on YouTube. You probably want to watch this like five different times because there's a lot of tactics that's about to jump out here and it's about to get wild. So hold on to everything that you have. Mavnit, thanks so much for the follow. Here's the YouTube in the chat right here. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. This is where the video is about to go because it's about to get crazy. The man played G4. It's G4 is on the board right now. So you need to be careful because anything, if you breathe wrong, if you blink wrong, okay, if you think the wrong thought, you probably getting checkmated here. So it's very, very ugly. If I take on G4, there's H5. H5, and he's just like, hey, what's up, man? Front door was open. We just let ourselves in. It's just, it's, it's easy. Easy access here. It's over. And also, uh, F5 is not a move. And also, pawn takes is coming, followed by a barrage, a barrage of the same stuff. Of the same stuff. Gotta be careful. Hey, Chase says Razor Brand. So what do you do here as black guys? It is your move. You need to do something right now. Bishop takes b5, knight c4. Rook takes c3 from reign of kings. Bishop takes b5, first thought from z nation. Rook takes c3 is not an option. I just want to say that reign of kings because he just reinforces the knight. And I actually lost a key piece in this attack. So it really didn't do anything. So it looks good though. Looks are very deceiving in chess. I got a YouTube video on that too. It's not a, it's just not a good, a good sequence here. Knight to c4, knight to c4, bishop takes a knight c4, correct, correct, we won't hold off any longer, it's bishop takes b5, because it's a forcing move, takes with the knight, knight c4, now we get rid of something, okay, you can't have all your friends coming to the house unannounced here, like, that's exactly what he's trying to do, so, trying to bring everybody through the front door, like, hey, bro, you know what, let's get rid of somebody, somebody gotta go, but also, at the same time, I do have attacks of my own, can anyone tell me? what the attack of my own is he i actually show you queen to d3 black to move what do you do queen to b3 from a b that's not a move a b i know what you mean though no. it's black to move guys black to move queen b6 letaria shares queen b6 queen b6 from disco inferno queen b6 it's unanimous. It's unanimous. That is correct. It's queen b6. Queen b6. I'm hitting this knight. I honestly don't care. And you have to look at calculation through this too. Is what, what if he does take this? Which you do have to calculate this stuff because you never know. 
if you calculate this correctly, takes. And then what if like, oh, check, check. Oh man, he bring his rook over. It could be nasty, but there's mate, big fella. Oh my goodness. That's not a move. Somebody get him, send a stretcher. It's over, it's mate. So there, I have mate on the board and mate, and mate stops everything. So mate always stops everything. So I was like, I just need to threaten some stuff and maybe I'll be okay. So I played queen to b6. So the knight can't actually move. It cannot move without mate. So queen to b3, I was just gonna take this and then this is winning. So I'll pick up a piece here. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm doing well. So honestly, the only moves are knight to c3 or a4. But if knight c3 with right calculation, I may be able to play a6. And I just want to briefly show that. Knight to c3, a6, let's say he does go for the same line. Pawn takes, takes with check, I take back. Rook g1, he's hitting this. And I may have like rook f7, actually, I'm sorry, rook f5. Rook f5, and I sit here, I block everything. If h5, then I snap here. Oh my goodness. I'm fine. I'm fine. Bishop takes. If I can't take with the bit, I can, but then this is nasty. Look at this. I mean, talk about tactics. They win games every single time. So I would have to take with the king on h6. And now there's nothing anymore. All of this you have to see in a three minute blitz game against the monster, Ginger GM. It's very scary. Very, very scary. But I'm, I mean, fortunately for me, I have a lightsaber on my hip. Fortunately for me, so I have a lightsaber. So it didn't work. It didn't work. So what he did go is he did a four. He did a four. Wouldn't you lose the rook if um if I play? Wait, wait, wait. You mean this line here, here? Where are we? Where are we losing the rook? If you took back with the king, no, he can't take this. You just take this way. There's no way to lose the rook. It's only attacked by the queen. If that's what you're talking about, Zomni. A4, so A4 was played. Here it is. This is the only thing he did. I'm missing all kinds of stuff. That's okay. That's okay. Kanti has great knowledge of the force, and the force has great knowledge of Kanti. Absolutely, Razor Brand. Absolutely. Thanks, follow. Thanks for the follow, the Dink Duck. Thanks for the follow. So A4 is on the on the board here. A4. After A4, what do you do, guys? Black to move. A4 is on the board. We got some stuff to do here. We still got work to do. A6 looks winning, says Nick BC. Heat Miser says a6. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Really not much else to do, right? Let's play a6. Nice spade with a6. Correct. a6. It's easy. So, and there's nothing else to do at this moment. He knew he had to go for it. And I knew this too. Because at this point, you're either losing a piece... Or, you know, that's like, he, that's it. Like, you're losing the game. He's going to lose his piece or like go for it, I mean. So, he has to go for it. So, he's going for it. Here we go. He's all in. G takes H5. I'm all in too. I'm not about to just like chill around here. I'm going to take this knight. So, I take on, on B5. He takes on H6. And now, what do you do, guys? You have you have many. Do you take on A4? Do you take the bishop? What do you do? What, what would you do here? Do I take on B2? Many ways you could go, go this route. I'm curious. What do you do here? What do you do? Do you think Rogue One was the best of new Star Wars films? Yeah, I guess we could say that. Yeah, it is. It really is. So it's pretty. It's pretty good. B, B takes A four. B takes A four. Take on A four. Take on A four. Everybody says take on A four. Take on A four. So honestly, guys, you are correct. B takes a4 is right, but in the heat of the moment, I did not take here first because it's not uh, it's mate. But actually, no, sorry, you're not correct. I'm thinking about it right now. If B takes, check this out. Bam! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! He went here. Now Bishop c1. I might still have some some serious counterplay with a3, but uh, I mean he still got serious counterplay. I have to answer. I still have counterplay that I have to answer to. So I don't know. You know, this isn't, especially playing against, it's too wild. It's too wild. I'm not into it. Very close. Very close. So what I did is I had to get rid of this bishop. Now, what do you take with guys, bishop or king? Rook g8 again here. King. Bishop, bishop. King, bishop, bishop, 
What's funny is, guys, shout out to people that say king, okay? Because that's correct. Now, Bishop, uh, shout out to you too with Bishop. But watch this Bishop line. This is how you got to be, man. This guy is strong, okay? I mean, of course, because it's the ginger GM. What else do you expect? But secondly, I took, I was like, oh, yeah, just take with the Bishop. But then I looked at his counterplay because I'm an attacking player. I love sack, sack, mate stuff. So I'm like, well, what would it, what would I do? How would I just open the front door here? So Bishop takes snap with check. Okay, and then you're like, you know what? Instinctively, probably take it back because if not, there's a lot going on. But maybe I could go honestly king h8, but that's still kind of sketchy in a way. It just feels wrong. So after pawn takes, you do have uh, h5 or maybe rook to g1. Rook to g1 threatening this. That's still mate. So whatever I do, whatever I do here, even maybe rook f5, I think he has h5 still, which I think, honestly, I think black's still okay here. Black's still okay. I might be fine. But I was like, you know what? I just don't want to be a fan of all of this extraness right now. Especially, remember, guys, this is a 3-0 blitz game. So I'm playing them, and I'm like, you know what? Let me uh, let me take with the king. Take with the king. So now there's no check at all. There's no check, and I can kind of like walk out of this pretty simple. But in a way, it kind of didn't matter. I could have taken either way. Couldn't take, it. and he can't queen check either. Correct. There's no check, right? So. No queen check. There's no obvious check, which means what? He has to respond to my next moves because there's no check. There's no check. So and if, if he could, you know, make a move right now and then the next move be check, meaning two moves, he needs to make two moves to make a check. And there's no possible way to make two moves to make it a very good check besides like, you know, I mean, rook here and there, but that's not realistic, actually. Rook takes, pawn takes. Oh, in a way, it actually is. Rook G1. Oh, my goodness. And then sack on G6. Oh, my goodness. Tactics are everywhere. They win games. Rook takes G6. Ooh, man, that'd be nasty. That would be scary. Scary. So what he did, though, after king takes, he did take on G6. King safety is a thing, says Quinn. Correct. Correct. He did take on G6. I took on A4. B takes A4. Here we go. What do you do as white, guys? He is now in the hot seat. Straight up, the B pawn is mate. No check, and there's mate on the board. You have to do something. What are you going to do? Somni jumps off the deep end and says, King C2, that's okay. We send stretchers for you. Absolutely, we do have uh, a few stretchers for you. Right here, those are for you, big fella. We just hit you right here. I mean, we can hit you kind of anyway. And this is made on a move too. Is uh, you know, just how you feeling today? How you how would you like it today? So it's like it's over. B takes C four. B takes A four. You just want to walk in front of this. Um, rook to D two. I actually saw it in the chat. Sore bone says Rook to D two. Queen to C two. Ouch! Ouch! Man, this on live stream. This on the stream, bro. This is live. Let's see. Let's get that off the screen. So after Queen C two is not a move. You also have rook to d2, though. Rook to d2 is the move he chose. Rook d2 is beautiful. Defends b2. And also, you know, in a way, this gets very tricky for me. What if I take this rook, which a lot of you will? I know a lot of you would probably take this rook. And then after takes, you are in, you, you are, you in some trouble. you straight up in some trouble right now. There ain't no way, no other way to put it. I mean, if you go here and try to get, you know, cool about it, knight f4 check, that's mate almost, almost. King has to go here. Knight takes d5. I'm going to just get this off the screen because it's scary to even think about. This could have happened to me. Okay. I don't want to be frightened. So that, that could definitely be a thing. But king takes g6 is not too much better after check in here. And like, I don't maybe queen g5. All this stuff looks extremely scary here. It looks extremely scary. I'm not a fan of it. And I am. I just don't want to be a part of it. Why are you going to call me out like that? Squeeze my <laughs> Just queen g5, can't he? Queen g5? Yeah, queen G oh yeah, right. Queen G5. <laughs> just Queen G5, can't you? It's, it's just me. Yeah, correct. See, it, it's so scary that you even miss the simple stuff. You know what I mean? I'm not taking this rook. So what do you do as black, guys? I am not going to take this rook and allow him to have counterplay here. Just because you see material does not mean you have to take it. So there's something else to do. Black to move. B Chow with the 100 bitch. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. A3 from Disco Inferno. Very good. I like it. I like it. Anything else, guys? A3. Anything else? Think outside the box here. Or inside. Wherever. A3. A3.
a3 yeah okay f5 maybe okay knight a3 queen b4 i still haven't seen the move yet i still have not seen the move yet guys as soon as i see it i'll stop the answers queen b2 make sure it's realistic don't just be throwing stupid moves out there trying to find it d2 rook a1 it's not it's no 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 d2 rook a1 no f6 g6 nope I mean, queen b3. There we go. Left hand man got it. Left hand man got it. It's queen to b3. Queen to b3. I play here. Now check this out. Why queen b3? Why queen b3? First off, I always tell all of my students this. You always got to know material count. I have like principles and fundamentals I always like to teach. So like always know material count. Don't be like J.R. Smith. We talked about this before where you just don't know the score and you out here just doing your thing. You, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Try it. It just doesn't work. And of course, it's, it's just going to be bad for everyone if you don't know the score. So I knew the score here that I'm actually winning. I'm up a piece here. I'm up a piece. So what do you do when you up a piece? Trade. Trade when you're up, not when you're down. So I'm up. I'm like, I'm up. You know, so and this is, it's, again, this is a 3-0 game. So I could have easily played A3, but that keeps still a lot of pressure on me in a way. I can't mate him. And pawn takes is going to take a while because I still have rook A1. And I got a lot of work to do still. And I may not have that many moves. I may not have that many moves. I thought you don't trade queens. Correct. Only when I'm winning. That's what you miss, Zax. Only when I'm winning. If I'm winning and I'm, I'm up a, a clean piece, I'm up a piece. So absolutely, yeah, let's get him off the board. Let's get him off the board. So I'll play queen to b3. But here's the thing about it. If he takes my queen in between moves, guys, knight takes d2 first. And then he actually has to go here and then it's mate over here. So that was I was actually going for. I was actually going for this. Instead of just taking a queen, which you can, when you find a good move, look for a better one. Queen b3 here. So if he takes it, I take on d2 first. So I snag some material and the queen at the same time. At the same time, you're still about to, we trading, whether you like it or not, we about to trade and going to figure this out, big fella. We're going to figure this one out. But what he did, actually, after queen to b3, he was like, you know what, Canty? I believe you. You do have a lightsaber, but let me hit you with this move, knight to c3. And I was like, oh, oh, that's a move. I didn't even see this. I didn't even see you could block this. So I have to, now I have to do more work here. Now I have more stuff to do. More stuff to do. So what do you do now, folks? A3, A3 now, A3 now, A3, 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 A3 is everywhere. A3 is everywhere. So here's what I did, guys. Here's what I did. Shout out to you guys that said A3. I didn't go play A3. I didn't play A3. This is what I did. I did this because I did calculate A3, but the problem here is like, I don't want to incorrectly calculate this. And he gets enough counterplay to win. Because right now, I still need moves. Check this out. If A3, and I was just like, not afraid, but like, I know I need to be aware of what's going on. Let's say he takes this. And then takes. And then maybe at, at the right moment, I thought he had Rook G2 and like mate coming in. But I always have Knight A3 for mate. So I honestly didn't think that I had enough time. And checking with the engine, actually. Move number three is F takes G6. Move number one by the engine is A3. So I should have played A3. But after um, I just took I took on G6, which made it a little bit longer here as he plays Rook to G2, threatening checkmate. I'm like, whoa, how do I defend this? Rook F6, not a move. Try again. And G5, okay, don't even, that's, don't, why did you even say that? You know, King H7, same thing. Rook F5, only move, blocking the connection here. And then if he goes H5, then I will go G5, or actually maybe something else, maybe. No, G5 seems right, but... Uh, after um, after Rook to F5, here we go. Is Knight takes D2 instead winning? Are you talking about uh, instead of back here? Just out of curiosity. You know what? The engine didn't consider it at all. So let me see. The engine did not consider Knight takes D2 at all. So if they take this, I'm going to see what the evaluation says. It actually says it's equal. And if you do anything else with what the number one line is, you're, you're minus 14. Equal. What? This equal? That's why I'm telling you. I'm not taking that. What do you mean? You think I'm taking that? No. 
equal. Thanks for the follow. Thanks, Beach Chow and Arrow92. Thanks for the follows. Not a move. It was not a move. So don't always take material that you may see or that is given to you. Got to calculate it. So Queen B3, Knight C3 takes Rook G2, Rook F5. He goes here. He's hitting me right here like a big fella would because a big fella could. Now, what would you do here, guys? I gave him a little bit of counterplay, which you try to you, you try to strive away from. But of course, playing even fast time controls and sometimes even just human error in nature, you do allow them to get a little bit of counterplay because we, we, aren't, we aren't engines and some of us aren't Master Jedi. It happens, okay? Even as a Master Jedi, it does happen. <laughs> So, you know, human error, a little bit here, just to give him a little, I gave him a little bit of counterplay, but there's something to do. I need to make a move here, guys. What do you do? I am attacked on G6. There's a lot of pressure on my king. What do you do? King H7 from Dank Duck. E5. E5? Knight takes E5? Rook G1 from Cook 2 Live. Uh, assuming Rook to G8. G5, Rook G8, King H7. Okay, you said Rook G8. Queen H5. Queen H5 is not a move. Oh, King H5. Okay, King H5. King H7, King H7. Shout out to you guys. You are correct. King H7. I play King H7 because if he's going to take this, it's not with check. And also, mate happens if he does take it on G6. So there's mate here. So you have to watch the mate. He goes H5, last attempt. Here we go, guys. Here we go. And finally, you've already said it many times, A3. Knight A3 is not good, Mr. Rio. Not that it's not good, but it doesn't achieve, it doesn't solve anything. So surprisingly, the king is very safe here. I don't have any ways of getting here. This rook defends extremely, like, extremely well here. I don't have anything else. I actually, I'm actually probably losing now after this move, which is pretty, pretty tough. So you got to be accurate. So I went A3. After A3, he goes F4. I take on B2. And that was it. And that was it. The Jedi pulled it out. Do you know how hype I was after I won this game? Do you understand? I was like, it was like one of those, like you watching a football game and they're like, oh man, they just need one more point. Oh my goodness. Oh, snap, touchdown. And then everything like stop and you're knocking everything off the table, going crazy in the room. That's exactly what happened. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was, <laughs> we won. We won right here, bro. It was like, oh my goodness, I won. I can't believe it. Like, you're still in shock as I was. I was actually playing on my phone, too. I was playing on my phone. So I was like, oh, snap. And I'm holding my phone like, I don't even know what to do. What do I do from here? What is that? Is this real? What? I did win. I beat the Ginger GM here in this position as he resigned. When was the game played? It was played in 2018. 2018. End of 2018. Something like that. It's on a PGN. So this was made in one with 93 if he loses his queen. Correct, correct. Or you just, you either have to take here, which there's nothing left anymore. Nothing left. Because knight a3 is straight up mate. It's straight up mate. Really nice game. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This is the first one. There's another one right after this. So, wow game. Congrats, nice game. Thanks, Leteria. Thanks. Bishop g4, bishop d7, bishop e3. I want e6, which I, I should have just played rook c8. King h7, he got out the way. I'm like, cool, let's aim. But, I mean, I'm a far away from doing anything. So, uh, but I am aiming. He played king b1, gave me a shot to get something off here. And then I start attacking. I when I when If I let go of attacking, I lose. And that's something that you really want to pay attention to is when you have the attack and keep the attack. And have something like this, sometimes they have to respond to you. And out of nowhere, guys, the table honestly turned. Looking at White's position here. Like, this is a nice move. He broke through. He can break through this in a moment's notice if you don't stay up on moves. So, unfortunately for me, I had moves that were just threatening. I hit the queen. I hit the knight. Mate behind it. I hit the knight again. So, it forces him to go into this line or there's mate. It forces him to go now as opposed to prepare because the best attacks are prepared. You have to. He, he had to jump. He had to jump now. Jump off the deep end now. Oh, I'm, I'm off the building. Here we go. Whether I'm about to fly or fall, I don't know. But we about to see. And takes, takes. It gets crazy up in here. Real quick. Queen b3. Worked out. Rook f5. And it was over right here. What a game. Opposite side castle equals attack. Correct. Whoever gets to that king first is going to win in those opposite side castles. Who is the Jedi in the follower image? Looks like Ravon. Oh, looks like Raven. Ah, oh, yes. Correct. That's exactly who it is. So this was 1-1 one, one and 2 Blitz games. So was this 1-1? One, one? Uh, we, we not, I'm not spoiling anything, Quinn. You just have to wait till the next game. Wait till the next game. 
And now, guys, we're going to take a quick intermission and go from 